Welcome to our Google Cloud Next 22 session with Deutsche Börse Group, Increasing Agility, how Deutsche Börse Group runs core finance processes on S4 HANA and Google Cloud. My name is Stanley Winkler, and here at Google Cloud, I am head of SAP Sales Specialist for EMEA North. As an international exchange organization, Deutsche Börse Group is aiming at becoming a major reference for the financial services industry by moving workloads to the cloud. Deutsche Börse Group is actually among the very first financial institutions to run core finance and treasury processes in S4 HANA on Google Cloud. Leveraging cloud technology has increased automation and process availability. Going forward, Deutsche Börse's cloud journey includes the integration of Google Analytics into its entire enterprise analytics roadmap as well. We are very excited to hear from two experts in their field, sharing their perspectives on the subject. So I am thrilled to welcome Alison Prill, Chief Technology Officer of Deutsche Börse Group, and Lars Polanka, Executive Vice President and Head of Corporate IT at Deutsche Börse Group. Alison and Lars, welcome and over to you. Thank you, Stanley. So um, before we get going on our cloud journey and strategy, I thought I'd spend a little bit of time giving you uh, an overview of who we are as Deutsche Börse Group. So Deutsche Börse Group is an international exchange organization that provides innovative market infrastructure. We service a wide variety of the full market chain, starting with pre-trade, which covers index services, as well as selling of our market data to different clients. We then cover sort of the trading and clearing value chain, everything from derivatives markets to cash markets to energy and FX. And then lastly, we have post-trading, which is made up of custody, collateral and liquidity management, but also our investment fund services business. As a very critical part of the financial service value chain, it's important for us to have state-of-the-art IT infrastructure, but that has to be highly available. It has to be trusted. And that trust also means that we operate in a very highly regulated environment. Um, as Deutsche Borsa Group, we're around 10,000 individuals headquartered out of Germany, but we have staff, offices, and infrastructure around the globe supporting the financial markets infrastructure. The IT organization uh, is made up of different areas. We have product teams that service the different business lines that I've mentioned, but then we also operate central IT functions that are focused on corporate IT services, where Lars will explain a little bit more about his team in the role and how they're progressing our, our cloud strategy. But also we have central services covering infrastructure, security, and also driving innovation. And that's where my team is really taking a, a lead to drive our cloud strategy across the group. So going into our cloud strategy, um, so public cloud strategy is a fundamental pillar as part of our overall business, as well as IT strategy for the group. We see significant benefits of operating in public cloud from agility and being able to dynamically meet different business demands by scaling up and down infrastructure, but also improving quality. We've gotten significant benefits of operating our dev and simulation environments in the public cloud, and it allows us to, on demand, scale up different services for our clients so that they can test uh, different environments within our trading infrastructure uh, and compare on demand uh, at a 24 by seven uh, request. We also have seen um, sizable sort of reductions in operating costs um, as we standardize sort of our infrastructure and our software stack. But really from a business strategy where we see cloud driving the most benefit is allowing us to deliver things in a more, more dynamic way and deliver solutions that we couldn't have done previously, whether it's new blockchain-based services, uh, delivering digital securities infrastructure and some new asset classes, but also having environments around big data uh, where we can drive greater analytic solutions and tap into sort of machine learning capabilities. Uh, our journey on, on public cloud um, started in 2016 
when we focus very much in a sort of proof of concept like approach but we made some fundamental sort of pivots to that sort of early 2017 and into 2018 to mature and also enable us to scale. Some of those things that we created was uh, setting up a cloud center of excellence team under the CTO area, which allowed us to standardize on processes, automate processes, but also standardize on architecture blueprints. We also, to tackle um, the very complex regulatory environment, but also criticality of, and evidencing uh, how we run in a, a highly sort of regulated environment where we're outsourcing certain services, we, we set up something called the Collaborative Cloud Audit Group. This has been instrumental in bringing together 40 companies, institutions across the financial services area and insurance companies to make sure that we are driving audits in a way that's efficient, both from our side, but also um, from the, the cloud providers that we work with. It makes much more sense for us to conduct audits together than having 40 different institutions approaching Google, uh, requesting the same evidence and the same information to show sort of regulatory compliance. And that's been a huge benefit in, in giving us kind of the, the momentum and the power across the industry. I would say the other thing that we've done um, successfully is making sure that we partner with Google to ensure that we have contracts in place that meet the regulatory standards. And that has also enabled us to move critical workloads and critical data into the cloud as we've sort of progressed on that journey. The other key thing that we have done um, that's driven success is, is really developing those strategic partnerships with the likes of Google that allow us to co-engineer and tackle some of the more challenging industry problems, such as things like how we evidence and sort of build world-class security in a cloud native way. So all in all, it's been a sort of uh, interesting, successful journey, one that's made up of constant learning and improving. To date, we're on track to have around 35% of our environment in the public cloud by the end of the year, but our ambition goes most, much further and we've got a roadmap that we've defined based on business benefit, innovation, uh, and, uh, and, and value add to get to sort of over 75% over the coming kind of five years. So, so with that, I'll hand over to Lars um, to walk through specifically how we're applying this strategy in the corporate IT landscape and what we've done on SAP. Thank you, Alison. And um, as Alison already uh, mentioned at the beginning um, and shared also a bit the, the outlook on the on the cloud journey, I will now uh, look a bit on how do we do this uh, practically. So giving the example of uh, corporate IT. So uh, how do we run uh, IT uh, for our group functions? Um, and also here, as you rightfully mentioned, um, how do we do co-engineering um, for things where there is no solution yet in the market? So where we try to also be a bit, um, uh, not only try to be, but uh, where we are innovate on the innovation side and uh, try to also explore things that um, yeah, even we are learning uh, as we go. So looking a bit on uh, corporate IT and also our journey, um, and it follows exactly the, the same time schedule that Alison has been presenting. Uh, we started very early with easy things. Um, so examples are travel expense or purchasing because it is software as a service, it is cloud, it is um, easy to explain because everyone understands uh, travel expense, everyone understands how to buy a pencil. And uh, these were services on the other side that also allowed us as a group to learn how do we do cloud in the context of regulation, how do we do cloud in the context of our control functions, and then within corporate IT, how do we make sure we can run services in the cloud with a proper operation setup? So this was kind of the things we started. Um, and we then went along with a lot of software as a service items, um, speaking HR, speaking service, client services and sales, and then also speaking, uh, let's say, uh, the, first, um, the first versions of uh, running analytics in the cloud. The ambition level for us as corporate IT is uh, to exceed the 35% that we have today. So we are today running at 55% uh, of corporate IT in the cloud already. Target state is to have everything either software as a service or running in GCP. So the idea is really that in the end, except of a minimum footprint, which we cannot move to the cloud, um, everything will be running into the cloud. And this would also set an industry standard so when speaking to partners and peers, uh, this is what um, many companies are striving for, but uh, more looking into, um, let's say, a five to 10 year roadmap rather than a one to two year roadmap. 
If you look at the target picture here specifically, um, our setup is uh, everything that is not software as a service will run in Google uh, in a typical setup. So, uh, and Alison was also referring to this, we are requiring RTO times uh, less than two hours. We are requiring uh, high availability in general. Um, we have to think about um, exit strategies and so all these type of things. And we are doing this for uh, new products like SAP S4 HANA, but we are also doing this for legacy SAP environments like uh, our old BW, so business warehouse, uh, or our, our old CRM system. So this is something we learn as we go. Um, the more modern the, the application, the easier is the move. Uh, the older it is, uh, the more tricky is the move. But these are things we are um, learning. What matters um, a lot for us is um, uh, regulation and information security. And uh, for this, we also have very early in the context of core engineering started with Google to see how can we run um, an S4 system in Google Cloud with all the, let's say, security features with all the regulatory context that we have. So starting with the technology side, but also looking at contractual frameworks, looking at uh, what are processes that we need and also what are reportings that we need. For example, when it comes to who has access to our data, when does data access happen? How is our network environments really a lot around monitoring and control? So these are things we started very early. We have set this up today. And when I get asked like last, what have been your key drivers to move with Google? Then I can always outline uh, three topics. Um, the first one is when we look at scalability. So a classical example we use is billing grants. So we have billing grants once a month. Uh, we have simulation for this billing run also once a month. Each of them is taking two to three days. And in a classic environment, you have a multi-terabyte uh, environment running 24 by seven, but only being used uh, for five days. And with Google, we can scale up when we need uh, the services, we run them, and then we run down the machines respectively. So we really have the full scale of, um, let's say, flexibility. The second item is around disaster recovery and high availability where we are operating in a two-region setup. And when I translate this into an on-premise world, this would mean you have to build two data centers and building two data centers uh, will take you a month to years. If we speak about setting up regions within Google out of the box, we are speaking weeks to months, right? depending on uh, design and, uh, and setup requirements. But these are things you can do um, out of the box and this helped us also um, a lot. And the last time uh, was really when speaking about uh, automation. So a classical, info, let's say, infrastructure as a code. So here we had really a lot of learnings on the one side, but also um, a lot of fun. I can really uh, call it as it is. In the operations team, when they started exploring and uh, they could do everything themselves, right? So normally when you run on-premise infrastructure, you have a backup team, you have a network team, you have a data center team, and all of them have to work hand in hand and they have different priorities. If you are running also the infrastructure as a code, you basically run it all. Of course, you need to have some uh, security and four principles in place, but you do this more or less with your keyboard in the command line. So these were like the benefits that uh, teams were highlighting. And I think this is really a huge milestone compared to an on-premise setup. If we then look at um, a bit of sneak preview, and Stanley was also mentioning this at the, uh, at the introduction, uh, like an innovation case that we are doing at the moment is how can we now um, integrate best of breed? So kind of combining a classical SAP business warehouse which controllers and uh, accounting gloves so that you will not convince them in giving this off. On the other side, you have a lot of workloads that historically have been moved into an SAP warehouse where you say there is no reason that they are there. In the past, just has been there. And uh, this is where we now use uh, Google Analytics for things like data tiering, uh, data mesh, so also allowing people decentrally to work on data and while keeping all data control. On the other side, also making sure we have, um, let's say, flexibility for these teams and uh, really using things out of the box. And this is where we have seen really a lot of um, speed uh, in the organization, and, and we are still in, in a POC phase. But uh, we have seen that historically building up an SAP business warehouse can take you years. Um, the POC we did in three months where we used really kind of out of the box services and uh, people really start liking this. So this is a bit of um, uh, recap on innovation cases we also do. And with this, uh, Stanley, I would hand over back to you. Thank you, 
Alison and Lars for sharing these valuable insights and your success story. Setting an industry standard indeed and having a little bit of fun while at it sounds like a wonderful combination. And to you, our audience, thank you so much for joining us here at Google Cloud Next 22.